Hi, hi, hi. If you didn't know, because there's no way that you would know unless you're so crazy psychic like me. I'll get into that later, but um, this week is OCD Awareness Week, which means a whole lot to me because I love OCD. I'm a big fan. I don't personally have it or anything, and I don't know anyone who does have it, but personally, I'm just like a really big fan. Um, of the mental illness itself. Uh, if you guys want to check out the mental illness yourself, you can check out the link down in the description. Thank you. I'm just kidding, but before we get started, I do want to mention that today's video is sponsored by Curology. Thank you, Curology, for sponsoring today's video. It's no secret. I've talked about how OCD has affected my skin. No, OCD does not give you acne by proxy, but for someone like me, skin picking can be such a huge issue. I deal with acne scars and dark marks, not to mention I already have fungal acne, so picking at it because of my OCD tends to make my skin not the happiest. The last few months I was really struggling with my skin and I was like, I'm gonna fix it myself. And th that just meant picking it out with my hands. Anyway, ever since I've been back to using Curology's custom formula that is made for me, I have been incredibly happy with the results of my skin. I've been getting a lot of compliments on my skin, asking what I'm using, and the true answer is Curology. I can be honest with my dermatology provider. This is what I'm going through. This is what is happening with my skin. I send some photos over to them, and they're like, I think that this formula would be great for you. I give it a shot. Works great for my skin. Boom, I'm hooked again. This is probably the most confident and happy I've felt in my skin in a really, really long time. And that within itself can make a huge difference to your mental state to begin with. Not to mention, I love Curology's emergency spot patches. If I have the urge to pick at my skin, I can just pop one of these on. But not only is it physically preventing me from picking at my skin, it's a hydrocolloid patch. So it is absorbing pus and oil. Mm. In the evening when I'm doing my nighttime skincare routine, I literally need one pump. That's it. And oh my god, look at that. I'm on my way to juicy, fertile looking, glowing skin that hopefully I won't pick at. If you want to try Curology for yourself, make sure to check out my link. Also going to be in the description. Subscription required, subject to consultation. And thank you forever and always, Curology. I love you so much. Anyway, I want to show my shirt off because my dear friend Jake got it for me. It says, it's OCD girl summer. Let's worry of germs on the beach and repeat nonsense in our minds by Marcus Pork. A few years back ago on my channel, I shared that I had OCD, which I actually had zero intentions of ever even talking about me having OCD. I completely meant to keep it like a secret and to never, ever, ever tell anyone ever because I was so incredibly embarrassed about it. I was so incredibly worried about how people would perceive and judge me. And it was such a shock for myself and really hard for me to get over, which I could do a whole video within itself, like first getting diagnosed with something after, just being one of those people that you're like, mm, something's off about me, but I just don't know what it is. <laughs> and the reason that I like to talk about it so much on my channel now is because I see how much it helps people and benefits people and also how much I wish that I had a YouTuber that I really liked that talked about OCD. I know it's a bold claim to say that like you may like me, um, but if you do and you may have OCD, I'm hoping that this video may do something for you, something positive, I'm hoping, not something bad. I also do get a lot of comments like, oh, you're making OCD your personality trait. It's not quirky to have OCD. Yeah, I absolutely know that. I deal with it every single day of my life. I'm fully aware of that. But if I can talk about it and if I can help at least one person feel a little bit more comfortable in themselves that they have it in a disorder that is so frowned upon, stigmatized, and also like, very, very misunderstood. And if people knew the real symptoms behind it and the real feelings behind it, then we would be very isolated individuals. If I can make someone else feel just a little bit understood and heard, and if I can motivate someone to go get a diagnosis, then so be it. I'm, I'm very happy to do so. Anyway, in today's video, I am going to be looking back at old content that I have posted on the internet that was uh, very clearly OCD, but I thought were quirky personality traits. I really wanted to delete a lot of this stuff. I really wanted to delete it and take it off the face of the earth and be like, no, this is embarrassing. I don't want anyone to see this because now that everyone knows that I have OCD, I don't want this out on the internet because it's so embarrassing for me. Like here I was like truly thinking I felt a certain way when in reality, it was my illness speaking. And then I decided I really should not delete it. My channel is kind of like an evolution of me growing up and this just so happens to be a part of it. I think it'd be pretty unfair of myself to delete the parts of me that were flawed in my way of thinking or quite literally like ill in my way of thinking. It also really helps me to deal with OCD with humor. I've obviously changed so much. Deep down, I'm still the same stupid little old baby Nicole 
and I forever always will be. But I would like to think that I've definitely grown a lot and benefited myself and worked really hard on myself. And it's OCD Awareness Week. Anyway, let's start looking at some content. Here's a YouTube video called Proof. I'm psychic. And I have always said this growing up. Oh god. Okay, so if you're reading the title, you're probably thinking, no, you're not. And I'm here to tell you, yes, I am. I really don't recognize my own voice. I feel like back then I used to speak in my head voice, which was up here. Like it was kind of up here, and like if I really wanted to go there again, I definitely like really could. But now I feel like much more comfortable that I don't have to um drink like two coffees at 8 p.m to make a video anymore. I'm making this video for every single person in my life who doesn't believe me because nobody believes me. Mom! I'm making a video! I'm just kidding, there's no one even home. This is not the point of the video. This is not the point of the video. This is not the point of the video. We all had to start somewhere. We all had to start somewhere. We all, we all had to start somewhere. To give you a little bit of a backstory, when I was really little, I would just feel that things were going to happen like within the next few minutes or seconds and then they would. Then I just kind of came to a point where, you know, these bigger situations started happening and I was like, well, I got to start telling people because people will need to start believing me so that I look cooler. And this whole time, I was not actually psychic. I was just actually experiencing OCD and anxiety. I would not predict things that would happen in the future. I would worry and ruminate over thoughts and things that I thought would happen in the future. And a lot of times I had good guesses or I had this thing called confirmation bias, which means that a lot of the times I was wrong, but I only paid attention to the times that I was right. And I would be like, look, I'm psychic. This thing did actually happen, which is inevitable for any person who has anxiety and OCD who is trying to figure out the next thing that is going to happen because sometimes you will be right. I'm gonna start off with like the smaller, tinier stories and then lead my way up to like the larger ones. Like when I predicted that a woman killed her husband, but yeah, just keep watching. So this last summer I woke up and I was just so anxious and that's very unlike me. No, it's not. It's actually very very like you. You wake up anxious most mornings. I'm literally just running around the house, like pacing back and forth. I'm like, I don't know why I'm scared right now, but I feel like something really bad just happened and I just don't know what it is. And then my boyfriend, long story short, he had a job where he had to drive very far away, he texted me that he's been stuck in a city for a couple hours because his tire popped and they had no way of getting back and that they were trying to call people and it just wasn't working out and yeah. Like I just had this like strong intuition that something bad happened. I just could not figure out what it was and then I found out. Or maybe perhaps you happened to wake up with anxiety and then you found something out that you were going to find out regardless because what was happening was already happening anyway. <laughs> I used to work with this one girl at this one place. So I knew that this girl had a new boyfriend. I just knew this because she would post about how she misses him and how he like writes to her and stuff. So basically I had a dream that I was with this girl, we'll call her Jay. I was like asking her, I'm like, how excited are you to see your boyfriend? You see him so soon, you see him in a couple minutes. So I woke up straight out of that dream and it was the morning and I just was like scrolling through my phone and I go onto Instagram and her story comes up and she's literally picking him up from boot camp in Georgia from his boot camp training. I don't have any explanation for that. And the weirdest part was is that I just kept saying in my dream, you see him in a few minutes. You literally see him in a few minutes. And a few minutes later, I woke up and yeah. You know what it probably actually ended up being? My subconscious chose to forget that I had seen days prior that she was posting about being super excited to see her boyfriend. But I have totally chosen to um, not remember that. But my subconscious does. This is very difficult to watch myself because I fully genuinely believe this. Someone commented um, most recently, bitch, you ain't shit. You're a fuck boy, basically. The problem with believing that you're psychic, which a lot of people with OCD do have, you then feel a lot of guilt because you're like, why could I not have prevented really awful situations? I say this all the time in therapy, not even as a joke, but if I was like conscious and not freshly two years old during 9-11, I know for a fact that I would have felt immense blame and, and guilt 
that I could have prevented 9-11 somehow. I say this because I felt like that during the pandemic. I felt like there was something that I should have done or some way that I should have known, like why the hell am I psychic for all these like stupid little minuscule things, but then I can't prevent or predict when something actually really serious happens. And the answer to all that is, is that I'm not psychic. That I'm just not. Sometimes I'm just a good guesser. Sometimes my subconscious remembers things that maybe I don't. Her mind plays tricks on us a lot. And at first I was like, oh my God, it's literally not even hurting anyone that I'm psychic. It's just this like fun little thing I say. Like, do I actually believe it? I don't know, but I do know that I come across a lot of very weird coincidences that are definitely not coincidences. They're something bigger from the universe. And ultimately by me feeding into this and not saying to myself, oh, that was just a coincidence. I'm sorry. Essentially what I was doing was setting myself up for a lot of guilt and shame and also delusion of thinking that my mind was more powerful than it was. Oh, I'm glad that we got that out of the way. Also, should I cut my hair short? Like that's a really cute look, Nicole. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next thing. Clemmy, stop! I predicted a song would come on shuffle and Adam said, if it does, I'll finally believe you're psychic. Anyway, the song came on and I'm psychic, bye. It was most likely on a small playlist. It was most likely that or really good guess, or I'm psychic. As you can see, my OCD had led me astray and made me believe I was psychic uh, quite a lot. That was a very big thing for me and actually caused me a lot of distress in my life. There's one situation in particular where something really bad happened to someone that I love and I would have had no way of knowing that this bad thing was going to ever come to fruition, but just for the sheer fact that I knew her and that I didn't stop it has caused me crazy guilt over the years. I'm still working through it, but, but me thinking that I'm psychic, probably not the healthiest thing for my brain, you know? Every once in a while, I'm like, damn, I need to stop trusting my gut sometimes because sometimes I'm so wrong about people. And then a few months passed, I'm like, wow, I need to always trust my gut because I'm literally always right about people. Why did I do this to myself? Yeah, so unfortunately that's something that I'm trying to do a lot less of, which has definitely hurt me in situations because I try to give people more of the benefit of the doubt in things. A man seemingly disguised as an old woman in a wheelchair threw a piece of cake at a glass protecting the Mona Lisa at the Louvre Museum. A famous painting wasn't damaged. And I said, I literally had a dream last night that this happened, I'm gonna throw up, I'm so gifted and talented. <laughs> Do you wanna know why I probably dreamt of it? Basically this tweet and this news article was posted May 30th, 2022. I look back at it now. Uh, someone threw a cake at the Mona Lisa up May 29th, meaning that I probably saw something about it before I went to bed, had a dream about it, woke up the next day, saw a news article about it, but I thought I was psychic. I literally had a dream last night about Amanda Pavlard and then today I got a business email address to her accidentally sent to me a coincidence or is it just that I'm psychic? Absolute coincidence because it was like a huge chain email that was addressed to like a hundred influencers. Um, and I just so happened to have a dream about Amanda. Uh, and she was one of the people that it was addressed to. I have gotten a lot of flack for this video, how I manifested my dream life and how you can too. Okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> I will say at the time of me making this video, which is August 20th, 2020, was probably some of the worst time period um, I have ever had with my OCD ever and my mental health in general, and I was not diagnosed yet. It would be more interesting if I could look back in this video and be like, I scammed you all. I knew that I was bullshitting you all and I scammed you. You guys fell for it. In reality, the truth is, is that I genuinely really believe this. I really believe that instead of me applying to a college and being an applicable candidate and paying all the money to go there and getting in was how I got into college, but instead I was like, oh no, my whole life was meant for this moment. And I asked the universe to lead me to the right answers and this was it. My relationship, money, goals, everything that I claim that, you know, I have manifested into my life. The ugly, but very true truth of this all is, is that a lot of this was uh, as a result of my hard work, other people's hard work and help um, and privilege. That's honestly like where a lot of this came from. It's really hard for me to talk about because I don't ever want to diminish anyone else's feelings about, you know, spirituality or manifestation. But I can tell you this right now as someone who is in exposure therapy for their OCD, manifesting can be really hard on the brain when you have OCD. You know how I was talking about how our brain, people who have OCD feels a lot of guilt for things that we're not even responsible of and this um, grand sense of responsibility. Manifesting basically 
uh, takes that by 10 and tells you that if you put negative thoughts into your brain, that you will then manifest that, which is absolutely the worst thing that you can tell someone who has OCD because our brains are constantly filled with negative and intrusive thoughts all day long. I never talked about this before, but it was around this time actually that my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer and I beat myself up over it a lot because I truly thought that I had manifested my mom to getting breast cancer um, because I just had a really bad feeling about it when I was a kid. When in reality, a lot of kids and a lot of kids with anxiety and with OCD and kids in general will think morbid thoughts about their family members and and will hope that you know that obviously will come true one day but what a lot of kids biggest fears as a child is their parent getting sick and dying as was mine and so I thought to myself okay my mom is a woman with breasts what is something that could happen to her oh well, breast cancer so I put into my brain once that she might have breast cancer and i believe that that thought had manifested into breast cancer itself in 2020. that was incredibly hard on me religion was also incredibly tough on me which i talk about in another video religion will tell you if you're a good person then good things will happen to you and if you're a bad person bad things will happen to you and it's very hard when bad things continue to happen to you and then my whole uh, way of thinking has been structured in good or bad and black and white and I struggle with the in-betweens and I struggle with morally what is right and wrong even though there's no correct answer truly for like anything and so I say this all because I remember how terrible I felt and the money and, and the hope that I invested in people um, who told me to manifest for my mom, uh, for her cancer to, to go away. I never wanted to talk about it because it does feel like a very low point in my life. And now like looking back, I'm like, Nicole, you are so fucking pathetic. But I also don't want to say that because a lot of people do believe in the power of prayer and manifesting and et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, it wasn't me manifesting for like two hours straight and, and hoping and praying to the universe that my mom's cancer would go away. Ultimately, it was this result of a mastectomy and chemo. The reason that I'm bringing this up is, is that manifesting was all fun and stuff in the beginning and thinking that like, oh my God, look, if I just imagine that I'll be like really successful with my YouTube channel, then maybe it will. Um, when it turns out that I was just really good at picking up trends, what was popular on YouTube at the time, I made those videos, I was really dedicated to my channel, I worked really hard, and things came to fruition thanks to you guys. While that's a positive thing and kept me going, it's also going to quite literally manifest into negative ways, like me thinking that um, I'm responsible for my mom's cancer because of a negative thought that I once had, or that maybe bad things would happen to me because I would have terrible nightmares that I could not get rid of. I still try to think of myself as a pretty positive person and maybe I manifest in some ways, but not nearly like I used to. In order for my OCD to get better, there were a few things that I needed to cut out of my life entirely and are like, literally I cannot even begin to touch because of how bad my OCD was and is and you know ongoing through therapy but that is manifesting and spirituality and religion is like very much so off limits for me. A therapist always says that religion and baseball are really really tough on people who have OCD. I don't know it's really tough because I really don't want to shit on like 20 year old Nicole who is really going through it and really struggling and this was like the one place that I was like looking for an escape and an out. But ultimately I do think that manifesting was really bad for my OCD. Getting into the practice itself was really, really negative for my OCD in the long run. I don't know, proceed with caution with things like that. It's nice that I'm able to like look back at myself critically. And I and I don't want to be mean to her because like shit, like I you want to turn to something. When you're really struggling, you want to turn to something, whether that's religion or spirituality. And when you have something like OCD, that makes it really difficult because our brains can't handle it, you know, like most people can and just take things, you know, with either a great assault, but instead our brains are like fully black or white thinking um, and filled with guilt and shame. Alas. Damn, this video feels weirder than I thought it would be to make. Oh. This is the most fucked tweet of all time. I made this tweet December 20th, 2019. I remember this day very clearly. I've had very graphic nightmares for the last week. Last night, I had a really bad nightmare where people were dying because of a tsunami. And this woman in my room said, Genesis 7, God is here. I'm not religious at all. I Googled Genesis 7 and it's about the flood. Mind you, I spent like half my life in Sunday school, but I have absolutely no knowledge on the Bible, like zero, especially what Genesis 7 would be about. I'm gonna wash my, my noggin with soap. Um, 
don't get me started on COVID happening a few months later and me feeling immense guilt over that as well, over this nightmare, which has nothing to do with uh, flooding or tsunamis. I kept saying, there's no way I can know what Genesis 7 is about. There's no way that I know what it's about. There's no way. Our subconscious is crazy. Our subconscious can remember things that we may normally just not remember at the forefront of our minds. But somewhere deep down in my brain is probably a little tiny, stupid, little ugly folder named Genesis 7, where I know it has something to do with the floods. And then I am very prone to having nightmares. I've had chronic nightmares for the past few years now. Me having a nightmare in 2019, not unheard of. Me having a scary nightmare where I decided to pull something sinister and evil out of my stupid little file organizer in my brain of my subconscious, this is me rationalizing it now because rationalizing it helps me because I realize me sitting here and being like, I'm psychic, it's going to do more harm than good. And I know some people are gonna disagree with me and be like, no, Nicole, you have a gift. I also remember this video that I made. It's called, if you still take the pandemic seriously, this video is for you, which I will say the pandemic, I mean, it was very hard for many, many people, but it was pretty tough on me because I truly uh, had a lot of, guilt and i had a lot of anxiety over the pandemic and probably that's when some of my ocd had gotten its worst not only because my mom was sick my contamination ocd my fear of hurting my loved ones around me so like harm obsessions were at an absolute all-time high because i was really paranoid knowing that if my mom got sick that she would probably maybe die. And so I took it really, really hard and I really, really isolated myself and I did not go out and, and see anyone for a lot longer than most people, you, you know, normally did. And that is not to say, you know, taking COVID seriously it means that you have OCD, but that, did it exasperate a lot of symptoms in a lot of people like myself to the point where I was like, oh my God, something's truly like wrong. Like I need to get help with this. That's exactly what happened to me. As weird as this video is for me to make and I'm trying to not be like, sad or negative about it. Even while filming this, I'm like, do I really want this to go online? But like, as I'm filming it, I'm like, I'm very proud of the growth that I have made. A lot of this, I would have genuinely saw as, this is me, this is who I am, these are my honest morals and beliefs. But now looking back, I'm like, no, my mind has changed. And I do understand and have compassion for the girl in those videos and tweets previously, because I do know what she was going through because it was me. Also in no way, shape or form, and I'm, am I cured of OCD? That's absolutely not the truth. I've been planning this video for a few weeks now. And when I decided what week I was uploading it and I found out that it happened to be OCD awareness week, I freaked out and I was like, I'm psychic. I'm psychic, oh my God, what are the odds that I would film this video and upload it the week of OCD Awareness Week? <laughs> and then I had to pull back and I was like, no girly, that's the OCD talking. It's just a coincidence. You probably knew that somehow. It kind of sucks like looking back because a lot of these like quirks and jokes and, and you know, the whole psychic thing, it was like my main characteristics and personality traits, uh, or at least I felt like they were. I had to figure out who I was without embracing those parts of me because I don't want to have those parts of me anymore. And embracing them is only kind of like fueling and um, giving power more so to OCD. And I'm obviously trying to rid myself of that because I'm trying to get healthier and better and happier, which, you know, has been working unfortunately. Also something really important that I do want to mention in this video, I encourage everyone to not diagnose people in any comment section ever, whether it's this one or their own or whatever, because that is something that I went through and I got diagnosed a lot in my comments by, you know, commenting doctors. Unless someone online is seeking resources and help and advice, if you're not their doctor, I do not think that you should be out here telling people what they have. My comment section was filled with comments of different mental illnesses over the years, people being like, have you ever looked into this? I think you have this. You're very similar to me and I think that you have this. And while I know it often comes from a good place in people's hearts, it can oftentimes discourage other people from trying to get diagnosed and get help with whatever they're going through because they kind of have this pushback against you because it's like, okay, great, I'm getting diagnosed in my comment section for just existing without me even asking for advice. But it can be really harmful and actually not helpful. And I think we should just all use our time on the internet a little bit better. And I think that all of us should probably stop playing internet doctor. It's nice to see how much progress and work that I have put into my mental health that I'm getting better. And I also wanna encourage other people to get help for their OCD if 
you have it because I know what it's like to have it. I know what it's like to have it untreated and I know that it's hell. I had very little hope that me going through exposure therapy and medication and doing all those routes that it would be beneficial for me. And I thought I could, you know, fix my life with manifesting and, <laughs> and crossing my fingers, but unfortunately it didn't work. Um, and unfortunately therapy and ERP did. So for anyone who's living life and may think that like, oh my God, there's no hope for me, a person living with OCD, like my life is going to be doomed for the rest of my life. I would like to say that just in a matter of two plus years since I've been diagnosed, my life has changed tremendously, more than I could have ever imagined. It is so much better than I could have ever pictured and life can truly be good. When you take matters into your own hands and you genuinely want to get better, great things can happen. Happy OCD Awareness Week to all who celebrate. If you like this video, please make sure you leave it a like because it also helps so much. Also leave a comment if you have OCD, know anyone who has OCD, any words of encouragement for people, or if you're just here to celebrate Happy OCD Awareness Week. <laughs> make sure you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you're gross. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. I'm going to go now, but I did want to mention that if you are subscribed, you are automatically entered into a raffle to win one full year supply of OCD. After the one year mark, it completely goes away. Like literally 366 days, it's gone. But I did want to let you guys all know. So everyone cross your fingers that you got it. And um, that's so evil. I'm not saying that. Goodbye. Love you. Bye-bye.